Welcome back to Turnips and Tornadoes. I'm Dan. I'm Joanne. What are we making today? Today we're going to make some no need artisan bread is what it's Wait a called. Minute. What? I need bread. <laughs> I really need bread. Need K-N-E-A-D. Oh, okay. And no that's need. that's when you yes. manipulate it. Yes, yes. Very good. Yes. So that's important because a lot of people, bread is intimidating to them. Mm -hmm. They see it, they say, I'd like to make that, and they think it's a lot of trouble. Is it a lot of trouble? It's not. Now, I have to admit, I've made this one time. Okay. <laughs> one time. <laughs> about a month ago. But it was good. I recall. It was that. really good. And I'd always heard how easy it is. Um, and you had shown it on a Facebook page of yours. Okay. And someone asked us to show how to, how it's made. That's okay. why we're doing it. Oh, so. That's right. I did. I showed the finished product yeah. and talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to make it. Okay. This this no-knead bread, this is actually how they used to do it way, way, way back when. And okay. then people started kneading and all that stuff. But Can I ask you this? Yes. Is this for dinner? No. It's not. In two days. In two days. I will tell you this. I'm going to be very hungry in two days. Good. So, You'll well, have bread. I'll have bread <laughs> to go. So uh, you make it and then you wait to make it. Yes. You, you can make it right immediately. It's just not as good. And the long fermentation is what takes the place of the kneading. Okay. So you could do it the other way, but it wouldn't be as good. Okay. We're going to be patient. So we're going to be patient. This is going to be a long video, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna like. We're just talk. we're gonna like. Yeah, do movie reviews during that time and all kinds of things. So we're gonna make it, and then we're going to uh, wait, and then we're gonna come back. But you won't have to wait two days yes, for it. All right, yes. let's we'll get started. Back. So we'll be wearing different clothes when we bake it. Hopefully, in Hopefully. two days. I you hope. don't know. I hope you don't. So know. let me tell you, a guy in New York City put this together, and then a guy, Mark Bittman, kind of changed it around a little to make it easier for the home cooks. Wow. And and he did an article about it in the New York Times. Let's see. Let me look at my two in 2006. Okay. Uh, his name's Mark Bittman. If you ever are looking for good recipes, he has some really good cookbooks also. Interesting. I really like him. Lots of plant-based recipes, but not all plant-based. So, yeah. So, okay. Let me see what else. We, what this does, I'll tell you this. We'll get nerdy here. The long rise aligns the dough's gluten molecules with each other to produce a strong elastic network. And this is possibly because of the wetness of the dough. It's a very wet dough. You know how I make, um, I make pizza dough all mm -hmm. the time. You do. Sort of thing. Like, if you try to throw my pizza dough up in the <laughs> air, because it's a very high hydration dough, this right. is the same. Okay. Yeah, you'd end up with dough, yeah, <laughs> going down your face, probably. So anyway... Alrighty. Um, so you've done your research on this. You've looked I it up. I did do a little bit because I was curious right. how long ago. I'd been hearing about it forever, Good. and I just didn't do it. For, I'll tell you I didn't do it because the best way to do it is to have a Dutch oven. Okay. And my Dutch oven is a Le Creuset oven. I've had it probably 20 years. Mm -hmm. And the handle on it is not metal. Where is that? It's down here in this cabinet. Okay. So the, what's, the, what's the deal with not having a metal handle? I don't know why Looker Say did not make a metal handle because they charge enough. They should have a metal handle on there, but they don't. So every time I would think about making it, I think, wait, that Looker Say does not have a metal handle. So I had to buy a metal handle to replace it. And they sell these. You looked on Amazon yeah. and found it. So obviously a lot of people want to do the same thing. They right. want to make bread or they want right. to put it in the oven. Right. And they can't do yeah, that. Yeah, the handle that was on, I can't remember what it's safe up to, but this bread, I believe, cooks at about 450, 475. Yeah, that looks and like 20 years. Yeah, it's, it's an old, <laughs> beloved pan. Oh, look at it. I'm Absolutely. glad you don't get rid of old things. <laughs> You'd be single. <laughs> All right. No, I don't do that. So anyway... Okay, and um, the best way when you're making a sturdy bread like this, and it's true for my pizza dough. I keep talking about pizza dough because that's the only bread I consistently make, yeast mm -hmm. dough. So I'm very familiar with it. Is to The best way is to use a bread flour okay. instead of an all-purpose flour. What I don't like keeping both. This is all-purpose flour. We're going to make our own bread flour. Go ahead and, and give me three exact cups of all-purpose flour. And then what we're going to use to make it a bread flour. 
is Vital Wheat Gluten. This is something, I used to find this in grocery stores huh. all over. I could I only looked in two or three and I could not find it, so I ended up having to order it online. But it's Vital Wheat Gluten. So I add, uh, let's see, about a teaspoon and a half of this to each cup of all-purpose flour, and that effectively makes bread flour. That way I don't have to buy both kinds. That's smart. Plus bread flour is higher than all-purpose flour, so that, that's a little savings too. So that'd be one, two, three, four and a half teaspoons. That's three? Yep. So I'm going to do four and a half. And you don't have to be exact, exact. You don't want to put too much of this in here, though. Okay, one, two. I also did my research. What would you find out? Am I going to mess up your count? Four, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Five, what'd you find out? Uh, what do bakers, what's their favorite TV show for bakers? Oh my. <laughs> I have no idea. The Walking Bread. Come on. You knew that show. Oh, The it's Walking Bread. Yeah. Okay, I was a little slow on the uptake on that right. one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Why geez. does bread not like our hot Oklahoma summers? Why? Because sometimes it gets a little toasty. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, we both did our research. I'm glad you did your research too. It's very helpful. Very helpful to make it. It's going to help ready. the recipe. There you go. So I'm mixing that vital wheat gluten in it. Um, and let me tell you what vital, vital wheat gluten is it is a protein rich nutritional product. And if a person had a gluten intolerance or a gluten allergy, you would not want to use this because it makes it even more Don't do it. gluten-full. <laughs> I'm sure that's okay. not a word. <laughs> we made it a word today. So anyway, anyway, and this is why if, if you're a plant-based person, there's a product that you can buy already made or you can do a recipe of it called Satan, mm -hmm. and it mimics meats. I'm not a Satan fan, Okay. Uh, so I don't make it. And I don't buy it. Well, we're Christians. But we, don't, we try to avoid Satan as much as we can. Oh, my gosh. You are just full of it today. So I think that's maybe why I couldn't find it. Like, you use uh, a lot of this, where I use very little. If you're trying to make Satan, I'm thinking it would take a lot of it must, this. It must. So that must be why I couldn't find it. So, Okay. So you've got uh, three cups of flour. And some people said if you put in four teaspoons of the vital wheat gluten, take out before that, four teaspoons of the flour. Oh, that's two. Yeah. Bread's not that, not that, yeah, I don't worry about that. Okay, and we're gonna add two teaspoons of instant yeast, or rapid rise yeast, sometimes they call it. Okay. And then, cool. what did I do with my little measuring spoon? I threw it over here. Oh my, oh, okay, good. Okay, I'm just gonna clean it with my shirt here. Oh boy, <laughs> this oh how, boy. This is how I cook, okay? <laughs> That's gonna be worth some comments. <laughs> By the way, we appreciate your comments. Joanne's been trying to get back into the old episodes and try to answer those. And so we're, we're trying to get better at responding to your comments, but just a shout out, we want to say thank yeah, you. Yeah, we watch them pretty closely when the, for the first two or three days, and then on the older ones, it's hard to remember to go back and... So, what do we do when we get comments? We try to listen to them because somebody, they got tired of yeah. hearing this. That's why I'm using a plastic bowl. <laughs> <laughs> they got tired of the microphones. They thought they were a little echoey, so we bought microphones. We got the overhead camera now when she's at the stove. So, we are listening, mm -hmm. and we also want suggestions on what you'd like us to make next. A lot of gardening questions. Uh, last episode, we were out mm -hmm. in the garden. We'll try to do more out in the garden. Strawberries are busting out. I'm distracting you. You want to get That's back okay. to the recipe. That, no, I'm in no hurry. Okay. No hurry. That's this one, a... no, no hurry. I am, because in two days I get bread. So. <laughs> or three. You can keep it up to three days. <laughs> Let's just make it a two-day bread. <laughs> it gets a more yeasty flavor, yeah. and it might have more holes in the bread the longer you do it, which that sounds like a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing unless you're making like peanut, peanut butter, butter jelly. jelly. <laughs> that is so true. It gets, drip, drip. It gets drip. real messy. Okay, now we're going to add two teaspoons of kosher salt. Do you know why I say kosher salt? I have no idea. Because if you use table salt or any fine salt, it's going to measure totally different than kosher oh, really? salt. Totally. So they're bigger chunks. Yes, and so the kosher salt oh. takes up more room. So you need more of it. Makes um, sense. If, yeah, so we're going to do two teaspoons, and bread is not good if you undersalt it. I do not like salty things at all. Teaspoons or table? 
Teaspoon. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons are smaller. Yes, they are. Okay. You're really getting into the cooking thing. I love it. I'm just, I love I'm it. I'm picking it up so fast. <laughs> and sometimes I look at a recipe and it doesn't say table salt or fine salt or kosher salt or large flake salt. Well, you're just kind of left at your own devices then. It, it is, you know, it sure is nice when it says which kind because it makes a it Supposedly, it's about two times the amount of kosher salt oh. instead of well, that's table salt. That's a lot of difference. You could also make it with one and then write it down and yes. if it was too salty, you'd go, yes. oh, okay. Yes. You and do that on your recipes. You modify them sometimes. I hardly ever... I try to make myself do the recipe according to how it's written first. And then, Sometimes I even fail at that. Oh, you know what? I think I'll add. Yeah. I try not to do that, but I do. But I don't know if I ever had a recipe that I kept exactly no. how it is. I don't know why. Okay, so go ahead and mix that salt up now. So we've got the flour, the vital wheat gluten, the yeast, and the salt. There's there's very little in bread. Yeah. Very little. That's what's called. I'll assume at some point in time we're going to add liquid. Yes, right now. One and a half cups of warm water. And warm water in bread constitutes about 100 to 110 degrees. So I've got my little thermometer in it. So you were adding ice cubes to this because I, earlier. I always over, I heat it in the microwave and I always <laughs> overheat it. Always. So this is, if you're serious about cooking, you need to have yeah. a thermometer. We showed you in the last yeah. episode, the one that we have for the garden. Yes. This is not the same one, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is not. not. Okay. And there's instant read thermometer. I think this is kind of instant read, but this isn't just a cheapy one. There there's we go. Some we're that, still <laughs> it again. <laughs> there's some that the minute you put it in, it tells you the correct But I would imagine those would be probably about, expensive. Along, uh, years and years ago, they were about $100 yeah, or so. I, so, And I didn't feel like I, I... I think that would be more important if you're barbecuing meat or something because yeah. you don't want it to stick in there for a long time and then go, oh, now it's over. Yeah. So anyway, and sometimes in bread things, they'll say warm tap water. I don't use tap wa warm tap water because it comes out of the hot water heater. Right. That water is not clean. So well, it's, it's clean. clean. To we dishes. drink it, right. I don't drink hot tap water. Do okay. you? Uh, not usually. No, no. I mean, if I make it like a hot chocolate or something, I do. Do you? <laughs> it's all right. Well, you know, you've switched out hot water heaters. If you see the sediment in yeah. the bottom of one, you'll go. Oh. So you'd rather get cold water, which is more circulating in the hot water tank or cold water, out of the tap, but then microwave it as opposed yes. to turning on the hot water. And if water. you don't have a microwave, just stick it on the stove for a little bit. It takes a very long, little time. Okay, we're going to put our water in. How much was it? One and a half cups of water. Like I said, this is a very very high hydration dough. Okay. Um, and by the way, this tool is called a Danish whisk. It is fantastic for mixing breads. I didn't have it until not long ago. And it is wonderful. It would not be a good whisk for other things no. so much. But for bread, it's fantastic. because Now, very, don't you have a, a mixer with a, a, with dough a hook. dough hook on it? That's called kneading. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right. There's hand kneading. And then there's, you know, if you have the kind of mixer that that is real powerful, you can put the dough hook on it. That's still kneading. Okay. And we don't need. We don't need it. A kneader. Okay. And in looking at this, oh, good. people are not going to like this. Why is that? I think it needs a little more water. Okay. So since we've already mixed it up, I'm not even going to heat it, but I'm going to. And what's going to be hard for people <clears throat> is that if you haven't made it. Because you want this to be, this should not be thick enough to knead. This, this okay. recipe should not, the no knead. This is thick enough to knead. Whoa, go real slow. And I didn't heat this up, but that's okay because we've already, the yeast are already in it. Is that slow Just, enough? Yeah, now, now do it. We don't want it so... It should be like, what, oatmeal? Like No, it, it should not be like a cake mix or anything like that. And it should not be so thick that you can knead it either. Okay, that's probably super close. Let me add just ever so little bit more. And bread recipes are actually very forgiving. Supposedly, I mostly only make pizza dough. This is, and this, like I said, is very much like the pizza dough. Okay, let me see it now. Yeah, that looks much better to me. Okay. Now, theoretically, after you made this, could you put like raisins and other stuff in it? You could. To, um, you could put some herbs in it. That would be really good. Chocolate? 
chocolate bread. <laughs> I, that would be more like a... Um, In our next episode of Turnips and Tornadoes, we created a new... Probably that would somebody, be more like a quick bread, okay. which is kind of like banana bread or anything right. like that. On a yeasty bread, you could, but I don't know if I want chocolate chips in my bread. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say that's good. All right. Still seems a little thick to me. This would be a good time to have set up our overhead camera. <laughs> yeah, it sure would have. Should have. It sure would have. Would have, should have, could have. Kind of yeah, looks like this. Kind of looks like this. Mm -hmm. See, it would be hard to knead that. Mm -hmm. You'd have to add a little. I'm going to add a little bit more water. And I know when people read a recipe, they don't. They want exact. They want exact, but bread is just not exact. And also, if you're a good bread baker, and I would not say I'm a good bread baker, you would weigh your flour because mm. when, different flour is different um, density, weight. Yeah, yes. Weight. And so, if you want to be really exact, you would weigh your flour. And I never have done that. Well, how that would, would you know a, how much three cups? Like is, the recipe would say. Would say so many ounces of okay. flour. All right, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, let's go with that now and hope for it. Like I said, it's only. Our second time to do this, so we'll see. So we're going to stop at that point. Okay. I'm going to. Oops, we're um, not supposed to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Slap your lip. Uh, I guess so. I'm just going to get the dough off and kind of put it all together. Okay. When you get done with the spatula, are you going to clean it on your shirt? Oh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> My shirt is. <laughs> I know. I'm messing oh, with geez. you. This okay. would not be good to taste. Oh, no. No, not who would want you to. You know what's funny? When you open a, 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 a package of flour, mm -hmm. not all packages, but quite a few of them, quite often they will say, do not eat flour raw. What like, is I? that a big problem that people want to? I thought that was funny. Okay, flashback to the 70s. You ready? Uh-huh. You were a medical transcriptionist. Yes. And you worked at Hillcrest Hospital here in Tulsa. I did. And the, was it the Rainbow Bread Place? Or next door. Next door, Caddy Corner, as I yep. recall. Yep. And so I would come up to see you, and I guess they would bake at night. Yes, it would smell so good. Oh, my goodness. I would get off at midnight. Oh. And it would smell so <laughs> Just good. in the air. I mean, it yes. was probably for blocks you could smell yes. that. Yes. Oh, but absolutely. I remember the smell yes. of that big yes. bread. Yes. It, yeah. was, it was tremendous. And then fast forward. Uh, for another 20 years later, uh, we're living in Oklahoma City, and isn't the uh, I know what you're say. <laughs> isn't the place where they made dog food? It was in Edmond, Edmond or just outside a suburb of Edmond. north of uh, you bet, yeah. Oklahoma we City. We would try to take a breath of air before we knew we were coming up on it because it would smell so bad. It was like a Purina dog food or something like that, and I guess they would bake the dog food or whatever oh. at night or whatever. But yeah, I, I remember. It's funny how smells mm -hmm. uh, have that memory. You can remember your grandma's uh, cookies come out of the oven. You can remember fresh cut grass. Yep. You have that memory. But bread, man, yep. that just permeates your soul. Yep. And dog food <laughs> as well. But <laughs> dog food. I'm getting off on a tangent here. But I didn't know if you remembered that or not. That, that yeah. bread. Well, I don't know if you remember when we've looked for houses to buy in our past. And if it was right next to a big pasture, and you would say, oh, that'd be so great. I'd say, they might build a dog <laughs> fat food factory <laughs> there. Right. And we'd be like, nope, nope, nope. not going to do it. So if no. we buy acreage, we'll make sure <laughs> we have a buffer zone in case there's a dog food. Ooh. Okay. Now, let me look here and see. Okay, so all I'm going to do, you could make the bread right now, but it just wouldn't be nearly as good. So I'm going to put saran wrap on this, and I'm going to put it in the fridge, and it's going to sit there for two to three days. Wow. And then we'll come back and we'll make the bread. Now, when you put saran wrap on, do you do it the way you did the other one where you kind of pooch it down in there? This should not, you know, some breads you actually, well, if it's a bread you need, you would put, I could put a little bit of olive oil on it to, you don't want it to get a, 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 a dried out crust on okay, it. Okay, so the olive oil when you put on stuff, that's to keep it from getting, getting crusty crust. and hard. Uh -huh. You don't care on this. We're just yeah. going to put cellophane yeah. over it and put this in the yeah. fridge and patiently yeah. wait. Yeah. I'd say two days instead and, of three. And if I were doing a bread that we had needed, I would actually put all, some oil on it. No, I would put it in a clean bowl, put oil in it, plop the, the you know, ah. be much more 
firmer consistency and then turn it over so okay. it would have oil on all sides mm -hmm. and it wouldn't stick to the bowl. Okay. This is different. All right. This is different. So. Sounds good. So we're going to be back in two days, apparently. Yeah, two or three. I'd say two. <laughs> you won't <are> burn. <laughs> two days, we'll be back. It's not going to be three. Uh, in two days, we'll be back. And uh, again, thanks for your comments. Thanks for subscribing and liking. We'll see you in two days. Okay, it's been a couple of days that the no need dough has been in the fridge. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. I went ahead and heated up a heating pad on about medium. I started doing this many years ago for my pizza dough. It helps it to warm up a whole lot faster. Then after it gets a little warm, I'll turn it down to low. And it'll be on this heating pad for probably about an hour to an hour and a half to get to a temperature that makes it easier to work with and that it will go ahead and be able to rise. So we'll come back. Uh, we'll be ready to go ahead and shape the dough and put it in a pan. I've had the oven preheating at 450 for about 30 minutes before we, we also put the Dutch oven into the oven with the lid on during that preheating process. We're at about 30 minutes now, so I'm going to go ahead and dump my dough out. I am a little ner as I mentioned at the first of this, this is only my second time to make this, so, um, and I did add some extra water when I put it together, and now I'm thinking, did I do the right thing? So we'll see, it may be a little loose, we'll see. So we're just gonna dump it onto this. I prepared the surface with probably about two to three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And we're just gonna dump this in. Well, it's looking pretty good. I think we're gonna be okay. Okay, yeah, it's kind of holding that shape some. So basically what we're doing is kind of deflating it now. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of flour on top of it too. And basically we're just gonna make some folds, fold it onto itself. So this is sort of the deflating part. And you don't have to, this is a rustic loaf, so you don't have to really worry about it. It's not gonna be a perfect, if it's lopsided or anything like that, you just get more crusty parts on it, so it's all good. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to, um, I have a parchment paper here. You do have to have parchment paper to do this, no need, uh, dough because this is what it's gonna cook on. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, kind of plop it onto this parchment paper. And you could kind of mess with it a little bit. Now I'm gonna go to the oven. I'm gonna get that. This is gonna be a screaming hot Dutch oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the oven. Whoa. Okay. Now, you can see the you can see the hot steam coming off of it. That's what you want, and I'm just gonna lift this up. This is why you must have the parchment paper. Could not use wax paper for this. That would not be good. And we're just gonna set it in there. There you go. Can you get a, Can you see the shot of that? Let me kind of turn it sideways a little. There we go. So it's kind of a round loaf. We're going to put the lid back on it. So it's going to cook at 450 for 30 minutes with the lid on it. I don't know that that paper all has to go in there. And then we're going to take the lid off and let it brown for about 15 more minutes. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. Okay, I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes have passed. We're going to take the lid off of the bread. Now we'll be able to see if it did rise. Oh, it looks so pretty. So now we're going to let it continue cooking at 450 for 15 more minutes. Then we'll check the inside temperature of the bread and see if it's done. Okay, it's been 15 minutes with the lid off. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out and check the temperature of the bread to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Oh, it's a beaut. Okay, I would for this kind of bread, I'd like it to be between 190 and 200 degrees. Oh yeah. 
we're good. 200 on the dot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the pan. This bread, it's only second time I made it, but I'm convinced it's like indestructible. Not bad. Now, if I would have wanted um, the shape, I could have used a razor and made, uh, what do they call it, anyway, a cut to where that's where the bread would rise. But I kind of like, because you get more crusties if you let it just do its own expansion. But we'll come back when it, we need to let it sit for 30 to 60 minutes per, uh, to cool off or it messes up the crumb of the bread if you cut it right away. So we'll be back and we'll see how it tastes. So, after waiting two days. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant for it to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> and for it to cool off, please yes. tell me it's ready. We waited about 30 minutes. We really should wait about an hour. Okay. But we're just going to do it at 30 minutes. Let's go for it. So, <laughs> okay. Let's give this a shot. Listen to that crust. Hello. Isn't that awesome? It is. You want an end piece or the? I'll take an end piece. End piece has a lots of crusties. Yeah. So what's nice about this bread is that slow fermentation makes the holes in the bread. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a great thing. No starter. You don't need a starter. You don't need to get it from somebody else. You don't need to knead right. it. Right. And uh, I don't say it's foolproof. But, but it's, it's darn close to it. Yeah. You know, I added that extra water and then I kind of got worried like, oh, should I have done that? But bread, I am no super experienced bread maker by any means. Um, but this just seems so easy. So easy. Okay. And this stuff is so expensive in the store if you buy artisan bread with the holes and really all is. that. It really is. Well, this is fantastic. You yeah. Give it a, a shot. I'll, I'll do this other piece. Okay. Give me just a minute. So again, thank you for subscribing. Really appreciate that. Thank you for liking it. Really appreciate when you share it. That's how this channel continues to grow. Also the comments. And also now we have a Gmail address, which is on the screen, and a Twitter account. Later we'll get Instagram and Facebook. But uh, we're slowly growing this as we get time. But right now we're eating. Yes, and if you have any, any comments about bread making whether i'd love to know how many people actually do their own bread making that would be really interesting to All me right, we're going to eat up guys thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time thank you oh worth the wait so good <laughs> you're good kid so good <laughs> so good this could be lunch mm, it is going to be lunch what <laughs> Part of our lunch. Oh, good. <laughs>